Hope you're having a great day. I know I am. We're on a 2005 LOI Duramax. And this one has the Taco Bell syndrome. It's got excessive coolant system pressure. Um, blows coolant all over the side of the guy's truck. It's got like 200 and something thousand miles. I'm not exactly sure on it right now. Um, so we're gonna take, what I usually do first on these, we pull the e-jar cooler, we're gonna pressure test it, make sure that that's not leaking. Um, if the cooler's not leaking, then we go for the gold, pull the heads off, you know? But the nice thing is, is we have this truck here, we can pull the cooler off, if the cooler's not leaking, we can call them, say, hey, let's pull the heads, and we don't have to charge them for pulling the cooler, because you have to pull it anyways, you know? So it saves the customer a little bit of money, but that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna pull the cooler off, pressure test it, and see where that's at. And if I do, um, do the cylinder heads, which I'm fairly certain this customer will. He needs his truck. It's a work truck, so gotta have his baby back. Um, I will record that too. So let's start off. We're gonna pull this off right here. See if I can remember how to do this. It's been crazy. And we're gonna take this side off right here. Get a little crazy with the impact. Okay. I know that my cart's full of parts right now, so I can't put it in my cart tray. My part, my my cart it's a monday I'm gonna have to go with it okay now we're gonna pull this off right here and this is gonna come off the other way of course so that's okay make sure this doesn't fall anywhere put that back now for where you forget where it goes and we're going to pull the charge tube off this side we're gonna get this one i'm gonna go like that push it down oh and i dropped the nut one thing i did not want to do when it happens <sighs> okay and we're gonna have to pull this off i forgot which it's not horrible but kind of is what it is let me go down there and grab that nut before i forget okay found the nut let's put it back on the clamp so i don't forget about that okay so next we're going to pull the breather pipe out of the cylinder head and of course there's dirt all around let me go grab some. Okay, those are all blown off. Let me get you a little closer now. It may sound like I'm sick. That's because I kind of am. But the work must continue. Or I should say the fill must go on. So these are tens. If you can see my imagination. Okay. There's one. And this is what it looks like a little tiny ten. Is that in your little tray? And then the one over here is kind of a pain in the butt. Usually what I do, it's got these aftermarket <laughs> charge boots on there, which are uh, not good in my opinion, but it is what it is. I wouldn't put them on my truck. It looks like it's blown apart already. So we'll pull that aside. Let me get you a little closer. I tried to clean it out as best I can. It's way down in there, deep down in the pits of hell. So we can get some light in there. One handed, baby. Okay. There's the bowl dropped. Oh my gosh. It's really cold out today, so. so I'm moving a little slower than normal. Usually, this thing, the heads would have already been off it by now. Let me fish this bolt out because I didn't bring a magnet over here. I'm tired of walking back and forth. So we got that. Uh, next, we're going to pull the inlet on the turbocharger so hopefully you can see i'm disconnecting the vgt connector for the variable geometric that's already been pulled off so that's nice now the clamp it's an eight millimeter should be i'm gonna go ahead and loosen that up these ones are pretty nice they don't they're not too bad okay okay you want no no okay here's that I think I need to go in the hot tank. Taco Bell? Taco Bell. Okay, there's that. This is the clamp right here. These are kind of a pain in the butt to put back on. They're not bad. Once you do a few of them, you get them down. And look at all the look at all the dirt in there. See that build up? That's actually dirt crap. That will be going in the hot tank. Look at that. That's dirt. That's horrible. That's why you always run, run a factory air cleaner. Make sure everything's tight and good. 
because you don't want to deal with that kind of crap. So now we can get to the gold. Okay, next we're gonna start, we're gonna pull this, uh, this uh, little intake pipe off. Hold on by a bunch of 12s. Okay, Let's see, so there's one right here, obviously. There's one, come on, brain. There's one there. Let's pull all the ones you can see. And if you ever do take these off, I do recommend replacing at least this gasket. Because this gasket down here is a multi-layer one and it will buzz. When you get in boost, it'll go, it'll sound, make a buzzing sound when they go when they're bad. I don't like to reuse them, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Now on the back, there's one right here. There's that one, just like that. And there's a nut right here. There's that one right there. Okay. Now we need to get this hose off over here so you can see okay. there's that side so now we need to get this this clamp this is for the I think the fuel pressure regulator it's like a sub harness I try to be careful with this stuff but the lumens just gets old you don't want that falling in the intake that's because that clip on the side really snug in here and then another race car this thing we're just gonna pull up on i have to pry it out a little bit just stuck on the stud it's because these aftermarket charge boots there we go that makes it easier okay there's that and i mean okay now Another way you can tell too, if you look in here, you usually see coolant in there. See, it's nice and dry inside the EGR. So it's wet in there, that's gonna be wet. That's just how they are. So I doubt it has a bad EGR cooler, but um, it's an expensive repair to do heads on these, so I'd rather be certain, you know? So we're gonna plug up the intake so we don't drop nothing down in there. Now we're going to pull the hoses off. Yeah, I've already been draining the coolant for a while now. It's got the wrong hose on it, but we'll replace that when we do the heads. If, the, if we do end up going that direction. There's that one. Okay. Oh, still got coolant up here. Okay. So we got those two loose. Now I'll start getting the valve loose. So we're gonna cheat a little bit and take take it apart like this. We're gonna go like this. There's one, there's two. There's two 14s right here. 14 millimeter, both the same. Okay, we're gonna go over here and plug this valve. Oh, come on, baby. Okay, there's that. Okay, now this stuff's pretty much ready to go. Um, thinking a little bit of an easier way to do this. So now in the back, this is where it gets a little fun. There are two bolts and two nuts that hold it to up here. There's two on the up pipe. And then there's two on the, uh, there's a bracket that holds it to the back of the engine. So I'm gonna just set the camera there for a second. And we're gonna spray some, some magical juice on there in hopes that nothing gets damaged. Okay, there's that. And that's magical WD-40 if you're curious. It doesn't make a difference, but just something is better than nothing. So these are 12, and you just go like so. They're actually not that tight. Pretty nice. There's one. Get that nut off. There's one nut, and this is the nut that holds the cooler to the up pipe. There's one on the left, one on the right. There's one nut. Another race car. It's been a while. It's race cars. Okay. Now let's get this. That one's getting a little crazy. Gotta be careful with these. Do not want to strip them. Okay. And there's the other nut. And there's one. 
one underneath it. We're gonna get this one. This is a bolt. <clears throat> these are not that tight. Usually these are really tight, but that's a good thing. Wow, that's nice. I like that. So now here's one bolt. Yeah, and I ordered a brake bar for that. I want to make sure it's right because it goes from like 70 something to, to 86. Okay. So I ordered for 85. Got the seal for 85. So I want to make sure that the brake bar is right. It should be okay. Okay, cool. Okay, that nut. Mm. Okay, there's another nut. So for a total, we have two nuts off and one bolt. Let's see if I can use this. I'm gonna get a little extension on there. Trying to make my life a little bit easier. It's not, they're all loose. It's just a little tension now because everything's loose. And this truck has really, it's its had uh, excessive cooling system pressure for the last couple years, but it's gotten to the point to where now it's blowing cooling all over the side of the truck. And every time it comes in, I inform them, but no, it, it sucks because it's a very expensive repair. But, you know, when they're done, they're, these are actually really good. When they're done right, I should say. You know, because some people, they don't know what they're doing. I've done a few of them. So, hopefully I know what I'm doing. I think these ones are easier. These are probably one of the easier ones to do. Add up the Duramaxes. There's not as much stuff on them as the newer ones. and The older ones are a lot, like on the LB7. But they're not bad to do. Um, just because I'm going to pull this bolt out of this coolant pipe. Because I feel like we're going to fight this a little bit. And I need to bring my magnet with me. No. Okay, I've had to wait a little bit for everything to drain out. So hopefully we're not striking gold. No, no coolant there. Okay. So that's plugged off. This. We're just going to pop this out right here. Down here. This is the... This is what feeds the cooler. So I'm gonna go like so. I'm gonna try to pop it out without damaging anything. Hopefully. Kind of a pain in the butt. So we go like this. And then sometimes it hits the alternator, sometimes it hits everything. So let's see. I get loose. You want to make sure the shield's on the bottom of this alternator because we do get pretty close to it. And then we're going to try to get this hose off over here. I'm going to see which way it comes out. And sometimes it's a little bit of a pain in the butt working in here. You got to be careful with the harness because the harness likes to move around a lot. Usually I just bend the ear on this, but I figure since we're taking the cooler out too, it might be a little bit easier just to pull the whole thing out. Looks like it's making it more difficult than it really has to be. But I think that's my favorite way of doing things now. If you pull the alternator, it'll make this uh, a lot easier. We still want no spark parties today, ideally. Trying not to touch. I wonder who did this hose. I don't think it was me. <laughs> Everything. I don't want to take the alternator off because I don't have to put it back on to get the fan off. Let's see if we can pry the, the pipe. You don't want to pry it too much. You don't want to break it off the pipe. It's not going to move that far. So what we're going to do, we're going to go backwards a little bit. 
everything's falling apart. So we're gonna go and move this, plug this back in right there. We're gonna do what I usually do. I'm just gonna bend this ear. If I can, still. I know the O-ring's probably broken on there, and that's okay. I have lots of spares. Yeah, that's not gonna fly. Gotta figure out a different way to do this. <laughs> I'm uh, you can't do it like that because I'm now I'm taking the cooler out. You know, if I was taking the valve out, it would work, but. We're gonna do make this easy. We're gonna cut that hose. Let me grab the cutter. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna cut this hose off. Um, got the wrong piece of hose on it anyway, so I really don't care. Um, I have this. This is just generic bulk hose. This is supposed to be an angled piece of hose. So we're just gonna snip that. Make everybody's life easy. If it does need a cooler, I'm gonna replace that anyways because that's the wrong piece of hose. It needs to be higher temp than that. So now we're gonna play musical. Parts and move everything around. I gotta get rags and cover up all these holes, cover up the breathers and stuff. So, okay, let's get back here. Try to get a better angle of the what's going on. So I slide it like that. Slide it forward into the back of the alternator. Slide the back out. Put the back out and up like that. Push it back again. Okay, and then now, we're gonna go like, you can let that all drain. Got a bucket under there to catch everything. Okay. There we go, and I'll meet you inside. So we've got the cooler on the bench now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pull these two tubes out. There's that. Okay, now let's take a peek inside and see. It looks dry. It's dry. It looks like it's good, but I don't know for sure. So I'm going to use a half inch extension and a piece of hose. I'm going to put hose clamps on it. And then this side, I'm going to use the same type of deal. But with my ancient leak gun tester. So just like that. Okay. So let's get these on. Let's use some hose clamps. Right there. So not too sure what happened, but my camera died. Um, so basically we're just plugging off the cooler. We'll get it to a leak down tester. We got one end plugged, one end hooked to this hose. I have it set for 20 PSI. Well, it was 20. It's gonna say, get it as close. It's gonna pump it up. Okay. I'm gonna sit and see if we have any leakage. I personally don't see anything. You know, we can see it's nice and dry in there. You usually see a clean spot or a wet spot or it's really plugged. But we're gonna let it sit for a few minutes and I'll come back to it and make sure. So it's been sitting here for about five, ten minutes, and you can see there's nothing in there. You can hear a little bit of air leak from the hose. And same thing with that side. Um, the one thing I do recommend is if you not experienced with this, I would fill this with water first before you do pressure test it just to make sure, but this one's there's no signs of leakage, so we're gonna go ahead and recommend to pull the heads and we'll see what happens. And then, uh, if I do pull the heads, I'll record it so everyone can see. Thanks for watching and have a good day.